Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, uh, in this video, I would like to show you the talk, the keynote talk which I gave to uh, the conference called Tribo India 2021. This was an online conference and I gave my talk on 3rd of December 2021. So this talk is about biotribology. Let me introduce you the subject of biotribology. Biotribology is a branch of tribology where we study the frictional and wear properties or frictional and wear issues related to our joints. There are many joints in our body. For example, hand, this has joints, our hip joint, knee joint. So there are plenty of joints, but some joints are very, very important because they carry our load, our weight of our body. For example, knee joints. So the two knees of our body will take all the load of our body. Similarly, the hip joint. So these joints are extremely important. In fact, all joints are important, but these joints are important because if if there is any issue, problem with these, um, these joints, then our quality of life will reduce drastically. We will not be able to move. There will be a lot of pain. And this kind of issue comes in a medical um, problem, which is known as arthritis. So arthritis is a kind of disease which people suffer from. Um, as well as sometimes people suffer from some injury and uh, the, the joints do not work the way they should. In fact, our joints are a perfect uh, bearing material. So, for example, in our hip joint, we have got the acetabular cup uh, attached to our pelvic bone and femoral head is attached to the femur or the thigh bone and they are in this kind of bearing attachment. So as you know our legs movement with respect to the pelvic bone uh, is quite flexible. It happens in all directions. So therefore the, the sliding that happens between the acetabular cup and the femoral head is very very important and if there is an issue with the cartilage then this um, this sliding will not happen frictionless there will be some friction and it will give some pain so this is the main uh, topic of this video um, generally for the implant uh, there are implant solutions for the implant the acetabular cup is made of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene this is a kind of polyethylene which is, has a very high molecular weight. And the good thing about this polymer is it is very, very wear resistant. It gives relatively low coefficient of friction. So this polymer has been used as an implant for quite some time. But this has some problem. And uh, many researchers are trying to find an alternative material. So in this talk, I will talk about the kind of materials that we can select which are uh, non-ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. I also include in this some of the composites uh, with UHMWPE. So, so I will show you the results of various uh, researchers uh, in the world who are working in this field as well as I will show you some of my results. So again uh, once again, welcome to this video and please watch this, my talk, which was given on 3rd of December 2021 in Tribo India conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chaco and all the organizing members uh, of this conference, including the Tribology Society of India for inviting me to give this talk. And. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk on uh, this topic, which is uh, related to biotribology. And biotribology is often 
uh, associated with UHMWPE which is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or for short we will call it polyethylene right now um, <clears throat> uh, for one reason that polyethylene is a um, very highly wear resistant material it is a polymer and it is very uh, wear resistant and also it is uh, biocompatible so it is biocompatible in its solid form but if there is any wear particle then it may not be so biocompatible that means the body may react to those uh, debris particles so this is related to hip implant application similarly knee implant also has got the similar issues and similar materials are used so i will in this talk i will give you a brief overview of what work is being carried out right now in in this field uh, there are many publications uh, there are many uh, lab work uh, that means the in vitro um, uh, experiments as well as there are some clinical trials or in vivo uh, experimental results so i will uh, give a brief of uh, these published work and then i will finish with some of our works uh, in this field which we have conducted uh, mainly towards going towards non uhmwpe uh, material but here i also include uh, the composites of uhmwpe with other materials so before i um, start let me acknowledge these individuals many of them uh, are or were my students and some of them are my uh, colleagues so i also acknowledge the help from uh, jsps and dst who have funded part of our research work here so the issue of osteoarthritis um, that happens because of old age or also it can happen because of injury work related injury or some disorder so basically osteoarthritis uh, affects the joints and here we are focusing on the hip joint our hip joint or also knee joint also has got similar issues as i said so here because of the osteoarthritis the cartilage uh, stop functioning because cartilage gets damaged and one of the problem with uh, the cartilage and here it is articular cartilage that means the cartilage which is in contact with each other in a sliding motion so these cartilage um, get damaged and the problem with these cartilages is that they are not regenerative that means they will not regenerate so easily unlike some other parts of our body and bones which which can regenerate uh, the cartilages the articular cartilages uh, are not so much uh, regenerative so this once this problem happens uh, basically the patient has to live with it or and the problem is quite serious because as we know our hip and knee joints are among the most important joints in the body because the body weight is completely borne by these joints so without these without the good functioning of these joints we will uh, our quality of life will reduce drastically this is one problem as long as we do not face this problem actually we don't even um, notice that our joints are working so beautifully so nicely one of the good thing about these natural joints is that the coefficient of friction that we have between the joints is extremely low it is almost like similar to the coefficient of friction you will face when you uh um, slide two ice blocks in a hot season so what happens is because of the melting of the ice you have extremely low coefficient of friction so when you slide two blocks of ice in a hot season you will feel that 
it is extremely low coefficient of friction um, and in fact the the healthy cartilage gives coefficient of friction which is even better than that so extremely low coefficient of friction and wear is also minimal because of the uh, the low coefficient of friction obviously wear is also low so this is the uh, the good thing about this joint the natural joint so but if the joint is damaged for whatever reason then we have to uh, replace it as i said regeneration of these cartilage is quite difficult although some research is going on in this field using the stem cells and so on but here we will assume that uh, if we have uh, a problem at the joints then it has to be solved by an implant so an implant is basically an external material so external material we uh, introduce and this is one example of how the hip joint can be um, hip joint issue can be solved so here this is the femoral uh, stem and this is the femoral head which represents this part so basically the stem will be inserted inside the femur and the femoral head will be here and the acetabular cup which is attached to our pelvic will have this liner and liner is the material which I am talking about ultra high molecular weight polyethylene it can also be metals and ceramics so there are um, implants which has got metal and metal sliding against each other but most common is we have either metal or ceramic femoral head and a polymeric part which is which makes the acetabular cup so now the although UHMWP gives a very very low coefficient of friction and wear in general but here we are talking about um, coefficient of friction which we need is is very very low in the range of, range of 0.001 or even less so under this situation uh, UHMWP actually wears so even though this is the best solution currently but still it has got the wear problem and these wear particles actually are not as biocompatible as UHMWP itself and therefore the, there will be some body reaction and basically some inflammation reaction will happen and this will require that the, the implant is actually uh, changed by um, revision surgery which is uh, extremely um, painful for the patient and as well as the longer life of these joints gets um, is, is difficult if these joints have to be replaced. So little bit about the cartilage that we have, the articular cartilage, which we, um, it, it is called extracellular matrix. So it has got extracellular matrix and it has got, um, the looking at the microscopic level, it has got many these kind of fibers. And this, this is a very, very complex um, uh, structure and it has got various kinds of uh, proteins and other lubricating uh, materials which are actually all attached to these fibers. So this, our cartilage is a very, very complex um, material. And uh, so if we are going to artificially make such kind of cartilage, we need to understand all these details about this cartilage. So I will not go into the, the details about the cartilage aspect because my uh, focus is today is on the materials, the implant materials. How the synovial joint works. So for example, here you can see that two bones come together, but they are separated by this cartilage. And the cartilage also has got the superficial layer. And these superficial layers has got proteoglycans, for example, hyaluronic acid, lubricin, radicans, and several types of phospholipids. So these uh, macromolecules, they become part of these, the top layer of the cartilage. 
and also this this is uh, filled with synovial fluid so here you see there is a synovial membrane and inside there is synovial fluid so the whole uh, purpose of this synovial fluid um, is to basically provide nutrients and also provide lubrication since our joints do not work at very very high speed uh, like uh, many of the uh, machines work so hydrodynamic lubrication is not possible in this case so most of the lubrication that happens is because of the squeeze action and this is basically the squeezing of the the water the or the aqueous solution into the joints so this is the the mechanism of um, friction of the joints that how it works so the friction is reduced because of the squeezing action so basically these cartilages will carry a lot of water and these water will be squeezed out under pressure so whenever these two bones are under load uh, because of the pressure the liquid will be uh, secreted inside and that will form a liquid layer so this is the mechanism of lubrication for our joints so therefore if we are going to implant an artificial material then this also should in some way resemble the natural joints this is a schematic of uh, the structure of uh, the cartilage uh, the top layer of the cartilage which is the superficial layer which has got uh, collagen network the lubricin molecules hyaluronic acid and various kinds of lipids phospholipids so these kind of macromolecules actually form the top layer and they provide lubrication sometimes these kind of molecules are also modeled like like a what is called a um, bottle brush type where you have got one core and this is attached with several of these uh, macromolecules and these molecules have got the property that they uh, although the overall they are neutral but they have got positive and negative parts which help to attract water molecules so they they carry a lot of water molecules and because of the presence of water molecules basically they provide lubrication so this is the way actually nature solves the problem of uh, friction or wear or tribology by having aqueous uh, lubrication rather than the oil lubrication which normally we use for our machines so the the implant that we are talking about the hip implant has got these structures and here is the uhmwp liner and this is the femoral head and this generally we talk about metal but this can also be a ceramic material so among metal the most popular is cobalt chrome molybdenum alloy so cobalt chrome molybdenum alloy sliding against uhmwpe so here it is basically a sliding action going on so uhmwpe has been the major um, um, has been the polymer part of uh, hip and knee prosthetic joints since 1960 so actually uh, chan lee was the first to use this uh, material for uh, hip and since then this material has been continued to be used and basically as i said the reason being that it provides low friction and especially low wear later on cross linked uhmwp were Uh, shown to have better mechanical properties and uh, cross linking was done using gamma irradiation which is part of the uh, process uh, uh, for making these joints and this improved the mechanical property however wear and fatigue properties deteriorated because of oxidative degradation because the cross linking process actually left many radicals and these radicals were easily oxidized uh, because of the presence of oxygen and this led to um, 
deterioration of the wear property as well as the fatigue property. Fatigue property is also very, very important for these uh, joints. Later, vitamin E was included in this cross-linked UHMWPE and vitamin E basically acts as an antioxidant and it helped to uh, regain the wear resistance and the fatigue uh, life of the joints. However, the, the wear debris problem still uh, continues even with vitamin E. Basically, vitamin E will improve the problem that created by the cross-linking process, but overall the problem of wear is remains. And this is one example of uh, a knee joint from the tibia and here you can see that a lot of wear has taken place on these two sides as well as some uh, chemical changes have happened. Because of these chemical changes it could be oxidation and you can see that because of these chemical changes the surface uh, color has changed and because these molecules have reacted with oxygen and changed the color. So, as well as you see these crack and fracture. So this is basically because of the fatigue. So fatigue acts together with wear. So wear and fatigue both um, act together as well as oxidation. There is also another uh, cause of uh, failure is adhesive wear. Adhesive wear means that there is a intimate contact between the polymer and the metal part. And because of adhesion, basically the polymer gets pulled out. And this will happen when there is uh, no lubrication. That means the two materials are in almost in dry context. In all the slides, I will be using um, graphs from various papers and those papers are uh, mentioned at the bottom of the slide. So the problem with the wear debris or debris of UHMWP as well as any other material, whether it is metal or ceramic, is that they will um, be in the joint and finally they will be eaten up by macrofacts. But since they are, uh, these particles are polymeric and they may not be consumed by these macrofacts, so the body will uh, react to the presence of these debris particles and that causes the problem in the patient. So this happens with UHMWP particles as well as many other particles, uh, other types of polymer materials that I will talk about here. So we will try to understand the UHMWP itself. If you conduct a test, so this is a, a test which we have conducted in um, uh, bovine serum as a lubricant and the pin was slid against uh, a cobalt chrome molybdenum um, plate in a linear sliding. So here you can see that the coefficient of friction in bovine serum lubrication is quite low but not very low. It is close to 0.11 although our goal is to get coefficient of friction as low as 0.001 or even less. So this the objective of coefficient of friction is not fully achieved for UHMWP and this could be one of the reasons why uh, UHMWP actually uh, does not have uh, a good tribological um, properties. The specific wear rate you will see in most of the published work is quoted in the range of 10 to the power minus 7 um, mmq per newton meter. So this is the unit of the specific wear rate. So always this is uh, quoted as 10 to the power minus 7 or in that range. So if it is uh, lower than that, that's much better. But as the wear rate increases, uh, that will cause some problem. And it is not just the wear rate, but also the wear debris particle size. So the particle size can be in nanometer or it can be in micron. Uh, so depending upon the size, the damaging effect of these wear debris in our body is different. So um, all we know, uh, we know quite a lot about UHMWP, 
but our goal was to let us see what other materials options we had. So through the literature, I have found that UHMWP composites have been tried to some extent. The composites, by composites, I mean where the filler material is something which is uh, different um, than UHMWP. And various kinds of composites have been formed. Then peak polyether ketone, which is a good uh, engineering polymer, and its composites have been also tried. And peak has been tried both in uh, in vitro as well as in clinical trials. Then another important group of uh, materials is uh, our hydrogels. So hydrogels are basically polyvinyl alcohol, and and this polymer has uh, is um, hydrophilic in nature and it attracts lot of water so about 80 percent of its weight can be water so it at attracts lot of water inside and that is how it forms hydrogel that means it contains water inside and this is similar to the structure of cartilage uh, the articular cartilage where we have water uh, absorption, water playing the, the role of providing low coefficient of friction. Then people have also tried polymer brush grown on hydrogel or sometimes such kind of polymers are mixed with hydrogels. So that polymer brush uh, also has got this property of attracting um, water molecules because of their charged sites and therefore we can in increase the content of water at the interface. So the whole uh, objective is how to Im increase the amount of water at the interface so that we can uh, it can improve the lubrication process. Then another uh, material uh, combination which has been tried and actually this is uh, the subject of our work is epoxy UHMWP composites. So in this case we have used epoxy as the matrix and UHMWP as the filler rather than UHMWP as the matrix. So I will talk about uh, this, why we have selected this one and I will show you some, some results. So quick, quickly I will survey um, uh, the literature. So for example, composites of UHMWP and uh, often CNT has been used uh, here, multi-wall CNT and you can see that with uh, so uh, with CNT actually the uh, coefficient of friction may not decrease so much but there is some decrease but wear is decreased and this kind of tests were conducted both in dry condition as well as in distilled water lubrication. Often people conduct this kind of test with distilled water as the lubrication medium but uh, ideally it should be bovine serum. Uh, because bovine serum uh, resembles the lubrication system that we have in our joints, the synovial fluid, and therefore bovine serum should be used as a lubricant. So sometimes the, um, the results that we get through uh, distilled water uh, may not um, be close to what we are looking for. Another type of composites have been formed uh, with and again, CNT, single wall CNT, and also nacre. So nacre is the uh, is the material that you can obtain from molasses or some of the seashells. So if you open the seashell, you will see inside there is a layer which is almost like a pearly layer, and that is called nacre. So use of nacre as a uh, as a filler in UHMWP have been tried, and actually this was. Uh, subject of our work and we found that the hardness of UHMWP can be improved. So in fact mechanical property improvement can sometimes improve the wear resistance. Not always but sometimes. So here we see that the hardness can be improved by adding some of the fillers uh, but not much. Uh, so improving hardness um, may lead to a better specific wear rate but here in this case we found that the wear rate actually increased 
because of the presence of these uh, fillers. So we were a uh, little disappointed that the pure UHMWP still does better in terms of specific wear rate in bovine serum uh, lubrication. Here is the uh, a debris particle, a CM picture of a debris particle, and you can see that the uh, UHMWP is a very, very ductile material. And you can see that the debris particle shows a lot of plastic deformation. There is uh, very little cracking. So this is one of the good thing about UHMWP that it, um, it allows it a allows lot of plastic deformation and therefore cracks are not initiated and therefore fatigue life is, is better for UHMWP. So from our results as well as from some literature survey, we have found that the particle reinforcement or liquid lubricant such as PFP added to UHMWP does not improve the wear resistance in bovine serum lubricated environment. You may find that some good results of UHMWP um, composites in dry sliding, but here we are always talking about bovine serum lubricated environment. So um, if not particle, then we can use fibers. So here are some results on carbon fiber um, uh, reinforcement of UHMWP and it is taken from this paper. So in this case, 20% um, uh, of carbon fiber was added to UHMWP, both uh, uh, dry and lubricated sliding tests were conducted. And here you can see that for the composite and with lubrication, and lubrication is, lubricant is distilled water, uh, the coefficient of friction drops considerably. So compared to uh, pure UHMWP. So this is a, a good result because here we can see under lubrication, we can find that coefficient of friction is very, very low. And it gives very good in terms of wear rate as well. So wear volume has reduced as we increase the uh, carbon fiber content, both in the dry case as well as uh, distilled water lubrication. So these re results are quite promising. Um, however, if we look at the wear surface, actually wear surface looks um, quite abrasive. And also we see lots of uh, pull out of the fibers. So this is not good in the case of biotribology because these, uh, again, these uh, broken fibers will also act in the same way as the wear debris of UHMWP acts inside our body. That means it becomes bio-incompatible and there will be body reaction to this. So, so this is a, a problem with uh, any kind of fiber uh, re reinforcement and especially if the fiber it has um, modulus and mechanical strength far better than UHMWP. That means the fiber itself is not very ductile in nature. So in that case, they will get pulled out and they will uh, create wear debris. So this is one issue uh, which needs to be handled. But as far as wear rate is concerned, we can find that carbon fiber gives a better result. And this is a, um, uh, from a paper which talks about the, the case study, two case studies where the, the composite of carbon fiber with UHMWP was tried in clinically. The surface of the, um, of the uh, composite looks something like this. And this surface, you can see that there are a lot of fibers. So basically these fibers run parallel to the surface uh, area. And again, these are prone to be pulled out during the wear process. So this is one problem that has to be dealt with um, when we are talking about uh, carbon fiber reinforced UHMWP. And actually in, in this paper, uh, as they mentioned, for two cases, both were a failure. So they were tried in the knee uh, transplant or knee um, implant. Uh, however, uh, actually the, the material actually eventually failed. And here you can see that 
some of the worn areas, how they look like. So basically there is a lot of uh, fiber pull out. And it has been mentioned that uh, fatigue failure due to poor bonding between carbon fiber and the polyethylene particles, poor fusion of the polyethylene particles during compression molding were the main cause of failure. So perhaps this material may still be uh, suitable for this application. However, the manufacturing part has to be taken care of. That means the bonding between the carbon fiber and the matrix, UHMWP matrix, has to be uh, good because the failure actually initiates from these interfaces. So perhaps a different uh, manufacturing process may help to um, reduce this problem and this kind of material may have some application in hip and knee implant. Now the other type of um, uh, materials are the peak and its composites. So peak is also a, a, a material which is thermoplastic similar to polyethylene and peak is a, is a very good uh, mechanically, bulk mechanical strength is good. So this is a pure peak where these are with carbon fibers and another one composition is with glass fiber. So here in this work people have tried same material as the two articulating material. So for example, if, uh, if you have a pin of peak, then you also use the disc of the same material, peak. So uh, sliding on itself. And they found that glass fiber um, peak composite is the worst because the wear is extremely high, but pure peak is, is good when it is sliding against itself. And in fact, the carbon fiber uh, composite uh, peak is also not bad. So what they are proposing is instead of having a, a polymer surface sliding against a metal or ceramic, we can have a polymer on polymer. So either in the form of pure uh, polymer or in the form of a composite. So this can also be a, a good solution uh, for the future. And this uh, micrograph shows some of the, um, the wear surfaces. Of course, uh, there is a lot of wear taking place and hopefully in the future, we can see some more results and good comparison with UHMWP results. However, when you are dealing with composites, this problem again comes. The problem of fiber breakage, fiber pullout, uh, which leads to pit formation and also scale formation. So these act as the, the wear mechanism and this is the most damaging part for uh, composites and the materials which are not as ductile as UHMWP. So in those cases, the wear particles will form because of micro cracks that happens during the, uh, the wear process. As you know, the wear is also a fatigue process on the surface. So because of surface fatigue, cracks will initiate and cracks will grow until a wear particle is released. So this mechanism will happen and this becomes accelerated if the material is not very ductile or if the material has got second phase like a composite, like a fiber or particle reinforcement. Now some other work has been also mentioned here uh, where peak has been slid against UHMWP itself or cobalt chrome molybdenum which is the normal metal surface we have. In, the, in this work they found that uh, when you use the disc material peak as the disc material and slide against cross-linked UHMWP actually it does far better than um, cobalt chrome. Cobalt chrome which is given here or other composites. That means in this work they are proposing that peak sliding against UHMWP can be a, a good choice. This is also similar result but here we have got just uh, reversed. That means now the pin materials are of these and the disc material is UHMWP or uh, this is cross-linked UHMWP. So in both cases we find that when you have dissimilar polymer sliding against um, against each other, that means peak sliding against polyethylene, it gives a very good um, surface because the wear, uh, wear is very, very low. So this can be another uh, approach 
for the future. Although this work was um, uh, supported by the same company that manufactures this peak. So I hope that this work can be independently re-evaluated um, to see whether we really get some good result from peak against UHMWP. Now I will talk about the hydrogels. Hydrogels are very, very important. And in fact, long back in 1996, uh, Savai and uh, co-workers actually did the work of comparing hydrogel against UHMWP. And they found that hydrogel has got equally good um, friction property. Although the wear data was not available, uh, <clears throat> problem with hydrogel is that their bulk mechanical property is not good. Uh, because uh, these joints are also load bearing. So our whole body, body weight uh, rests on these joints. So therefore the material must have very good mechanical strength as well as trapological uh, properties. So these hydrogels actually lack the kind of mechanical strength we need. However, on the trapological side, they do very well because obviously because they, uh, they contain a lot of water and the water acts as a lubricant. So somehow if we can improve the hydrogel, perhaps that could give us some kind of solution. So here um, in this, you, you see that hydrogel, different types of hydrogel, basically the different methods of forming hydrogel against cobalt chrome molybdenum. <clears throat> So in pure water, it does not give very low coefficient of friction, but when you slide it in synovial fluid, actually the coefficient of friction is very, very low. Again, the, the main problem with um, uh, hydrogel is the wear aspect. Friction is reduced because of the presence of uh, water, but wear uh, issue is still there. So therefore, uh, this wear problem has to be solved before hydrogel can be uh, fully used. Uh, however, uh, we have found that uh, in literature that some hydrogels have been used in clinical trials along with some stem cells. So basically using the stem cells, basically the hydrogel forms some sort of regenerative uh, cartilage and that protects the, um, basically that cures the problem of wear of the cartilage. So in the PVA um, uh, hydrogel, actually in the sliding test, we do find that some wear uh, takes place. So basic problem is the mechanical strength of uh, hydrogel and uh, improving the wear aspects. Other trials have been done by adding some polymers and this, these are called zwitterion polymers. So these are basically polymers which can uh, attract water molecules, as you can see here. Although they are neutral, but they possess positive and negative charges in close proximity. And they uh, attract water molecules because of those charges. So by adding these kind of polymers inside hydrogel, you are basically increasing the content of water. You increase uh, more water and therefore possibility of better lubrication. And in, in this paper, they have shown that by adding these kind of uh, polymers, which we uh, they call PMEDSAH, uh, as we improve, increase the content, uh, the coefficient of friction drastically drops down and it continues to be the low. So this solution is can be a, a viable solution for the future because hydrogel is being considered as a as a future implant material. Now I will talk about some of, from our work, we started focusing on um, SU8, which is a, a kind of epoxy, and UHMWP uh, in the form of composites. So here UHMWP is used as a filler. And we have found that UHMWP particles are very um, mix, mixable in epoxy. That means they very easily mix. So there is no segregation. So we, we do not have the problem of any uh, in forming the a good mixture of epoxy and UHMWP, although they, it is not soluble. So UHMWP is not um, dissolving in epoxy, it still stays as solid particles, 
but it distributes uh, itself very uh, nicely inside epoxy. So here there are some comparisons for con conventional UHMWP uh, bulk properties and pure SU8. So SU8 has uh, far better mechanical strength, but tribologically SU8 is not a good material uh, because it has got high friction and high wear. So basically, uh, some particles of UHMWP inside epoxy can help to uh, solve the tribological problem uh, and the mechanical uh, strength will be taken still taken by epoxy. Now increasing mechanical strength may have some, uh, some benefit and one benefit is that the acetabular cup which generally uh, has got certain fixed size because of the bulk property of UHMWP, we can make this acetabular cup slightly thinner if the polymer part has higher mechanical strength. And this thinner one will allow for better design. So by using better design, we can reduce the pressure and therefore it can help in the overall um, performance of these implants. So we formed uh, the SU8 composite uh, with UHMWP. So here, for example, UH25 means 25 weight percent of UHMWP particles in SU8. Now we added some other material and we added this uh, hyaluronic acid as another filler. So here we write at HA02 means 0.02 percentage. So we uh, varied the percentage of HA uh, to see the effect. And this here basically acts as a boundary lubricant because HA is a, is a good uh, lubricant which boundary lubricant which is also present in synovial fluid and therefore we use this, um, this uh, as a filler in this composite. So these are the, the samples that we have produced and this is the counterface. The counterface is cobalt chrome molybdenum uh, alloy. Now when you are conducting a wear test of these materials in bovine serum or in water, one of the biggest problem you will face is that the material soaks a lot of water and therefore the wear uh, uh, determination of wear becomes a big problem because wear is basically loss of material but because of the absorption of water basically the weight is increasing so the pin, uh, the, the weight of the pin is increasing as experiment continues. So finding out the wear uh, becomes a big problem. So in this work, we, uh, we, we use this method. So on the pin surface, we produce these uh, tiny holes. So we produce five tiny holes of certain depth. So these are the fine uh, holes about 1.5 micron diameter. And as the wear takes place, so wear takes place on the surface, as the wear takes place, basically the uh, depth of these uh, holes will reduce. So some reduction in the depth will be because of the load, which is related to the creep process, and some will be because of wear. So by identifying how much uh, it is reducing because of creep, we can find out the reduction in the hole depth because of wear. And once we know the reduction in the depth, uh, we can multiply by the cross-sectional area of the specimen and we can find out the volume. So this is an innovative way uh, to find out the wear in this kind of experiments. So now, um, first is the Wicker's, Wicker's hardness test because uh, we need to know the bulk property. And SU8 is a, has very high hardness, but as you add uh, UHMWP, there is slight reduction in the hardness because UHMWP itself is a soft polymer and but as you add HA particles inside the hardness again increases and this is because HA actually not only acts as a lubricant but this also acts like a hardener. It helps in the cross-linking process for epoxy. And these are the, the friction uh, data. So friction test was conducted on a pin on disc. Uh, tests and SU8 as I said SU8 is a epoxy it gives a very high coefficient of friction but as we add 
UHMWP, which is UH25 here, actually the coefficient of friction goes uh, down. And for this specimen, UHMWP 25% um, and uh, hyaluronic acid 0 0.02 and 0.05% actually, the coefficient of friction was below 0 0.1, which was quite uh, good, good reduction. So we believe that this composite may have some future and we need to investigate further. So we conducted the, and these are the average coefficient of friction data and you can see that um, UH25, which means 25 weight percent of UHMWP in SU8 gives uh, almost similar to pure UHMWP. And when we add HA particles, the coefficient of friction further reduces. And similarly, we see in the wear, the wear performance of these composites are better than pure UHMWP or even the, the composites. So this way we can see that this composite epoxy with UHMWP particle and some fillers which act as boundary lubricants, for example, uh, HA particles can help to um, make uh, a composite which may have some future in replacing UHMWP, pure UHMWP. This is how the composite surface looks in uh, ACM. So these are the UHMWP particles. In our case, it was about 40 micron. And this is the SU8 matrix. And you can see that there is a very good bonding um, between UHMWP particles and SU8 matrix. And this basically helps to improve both toughness as well as reduce the, the wear. Finally, I would like to uh, summarize. Uh, many efforts have been made towards finding a solution of hip and knee joint prosthetic implants going beyond pure UHMWP. Because current material UHMWP uh, has lots of uh, benefits, but the wear uh, problem is still there and many people are trying to find a replacement, perhaps a replacement or some improvement in UHMWP wear. Peak with crosslink PE, polyethylene, has shown promise, but needs to be re-evaluated. This kind of uh, research has not been done widely, only few um, groups, and they are all related to uh, the companies which manufacture Peak. So therefore, it will be good if we can get some independent re-evaluation of peak against polyethylene or against itself. PBA hydrogel and a combination with deuterium uh, polymer boundary lubricant can be a good promise. However, the problem will be that we still have not solved the bulk problem, bulk uh, property problem. So although uh, lubrication part is, is good, but the, the bulk also uh, bulk property also has to be improved. From our experience, we have found that epoxy or similar thermoset with UHMW particle and a boundary lubricant like uh, hyaluronic acid can hold promise for future e uh, evaluation for these hip and knee joint application. So this is all. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. And if you have any question, I would be happy to answer them.